today we're going to be going over the best archer commander pairs in rise of kingdoms what's going on guys cheers now this video is going to focus on open field fighting with archer commanders and the best five pairs that i think you should be running if you are in archer main if you prefer cavalry i just made a video talking about that on the channel so go ahead and check that out and i was gonna do infantry next but because we have two new infantry commanders coming into the game very soon i figured i would wait a little bit to get a little more hands-on experience with them because i think they're going to change things now as a quick disclaimer this video is mainly focused on archer open field fighting for free to play and low spenders who are relatively new to the game this video is not for rally leads garrison leads it's not for the players that have spent 20 grand on archer commanders and equipment so just keep that in mind and later in the video we're going to share some different equipment that you can pair on these archer commanders as well and of course we're going to be using our trusty tier maker hopefully i will remember to link this in the description below but without further ado let's Let's jump into the first pair that you should be building the first pair I want to talk about is actually Boudica with Artemisia I know a lot of you were expecting YSG and if you were only building one commander pair then yes I would say go with YSG I think this is a very high damage output March but we're going to talk about YSG a little bit later okay so don't freak out just yet now Boudica with Artemisia have a really interesting synergy in that you could do either of them as the primary commander depending on what you want I would say most of the time you want to do Boudica primary for the skill tree and because her active skill makes the target take 35 percent increase skill damage which means this skill damage on Artemisia is going to deal a little bit more damage which is really nice on top of that the synergy between these two is just amazing Artemisia is giving you 40 percent of really premium tanky stats here which Boudica really really loves a lot of players when she came into the game we're saying that she's incredible but she's just a little bit too squishy for their liking and I can understand why she does gain a ton of defense but not right out of the gate right out of your city she's not going to have that tankiness so adding Ar Artemisia there is going to add just a little bit more consistency with how tanky she can be and of course Boudica gives Artemisia the attack percentage that she's missing but the synergy between these two really shines with Boudica's expertise here it says of course you get 10 percent all damage from archers which is just insane but also you have an 80 percent chance to dispel control of effects which includes silence now if you know anything about Artemisia on her fourth skill here she has a 50 percent chance to silence herself which will increase her damage by 50 percent for five seconds which is insane so if you can remove the downsides of this skill and still fire off the active skills of Artemisia and Boudica that is incredible plus don't forget Boudica has the 25 percent skill damage taken reduction which is important because Artemisia unfortunately on her expertise does a little bit more damage but has the chance to have them deal more skill damage and so just overall I think this stacks really nicely with the tankiness of Artemisia and this goes without saying but Artemisia has a really nice AoE it hits up to three targets it's 1800 it's solid and of course Boudica one of the biggest downsides of her is that she doesn't have AoE so really this is a really solid pair and this is a great way where if you have Artemisia or you started working on her earlier on this kind of breathes fresh air into her and gives you another reason to put her on the field and of course if you've been around the channel you know that I think Artemisia is absolutely gorgeous so any excuse that we have to use her once again is uh, is really nice and Boudica I think is the way to go moving on to the second pair we are going to talk about YSG but it's not necessarily going to be with the commander that you expect and that is with Henry I've seen some top tier Archer players using this combination in the open field and I think it is definitely the way to go a lot of players are using Nebu with YSG which is also an insanely good combination and if you were only going to build two marches I would say this is probably the way to go however we're going to save Nebu for another March so don't worry about that I still think Nebu is really good but the reason that we're pairing YSG with Henry is actually really really simple Yi Song Ye has a legendary reputation for being the absolute best AoE commander in the game and I don't think that that has changed the skill damage here is insane it's a circular AoE it gives you 50 percent more skill damage as well and he has a built-in rage engine which is what you want for this active skill so really he's just a vanilla AoE machine that is still exceptionally good to this day and the reason that you want to put him behind Henry is because YSG is basically the definition of a glass cannon he is the commander that uh will sink the soonest if you start attacking him and the thing about Henry primary is 
two things one having Henry as the primary means that he is going to be the emblem that you see in the open fields right now when YSG fires his skill shot it does show up briefly but for the most part you're going to see Henry in the open fields and a lot of people don't really want to hit Henry which is great because you want people to not hit your YSG as well now let's take a look at his skills because I think Henry is a commander that a lot of players kind of don't have Boudicca came out at the same time a lot of people love Boudicca Henry was the mightiest governor commander so you know he kind of got a little bit overshadowed and was harder to get so I think a lot of people don't really realize what Henry is doing in the open field but first of all he has the same insane single target nuke that Boudicca has except he gives himself a five second buff where you take 30 percent less skill damage now remember with the rage engine on YSG you're going to be popping this off a little bit faster which is really nice plus you have the support tree which gives you 150 rage every single time you fire an active skill with the uh with rejuvenate so you're going to be popping this skill pretty frequently even though you don't have the skill tree where you get a little bit extra damage which is unfortunate but a five second skill damage taken reduction I mean this is going to be up most of the time it, it just is especially in longer fights like you're mostly going to be taking 30 percent less skill damage you also gain 20 percent extra defense 20 percent extra attack which is nice now of course YSG does have a little bit of a, of a attack that he can proc it's 100 percent only for a short period and it's a 10 percent chance also why she has 10 percent defense on his relic so really this just adds some more consistency to those stats for ysg plus 20 percent march speed outside of alliance terry is really really good ysg no march speed on this commander either which is another reason why he's kind of a glass cannon that can be hit pretty hard in the open field the fourth skill on henry gives you just straight up 10 percent more damage which you're already dealing a ton of with ysg and remember ysg's 50 percent skill damage increase is going to apply to this single target nuke here on henry which is nice you also have a 10 percent chance when attacked to deal an 800 direct damage factor to the attacker which is one of the reasons why you don't really want to hit Henry he's not going to take as much skill damage as you would hope him to when you're hitting him and also he has a chance to just clap back for free with an 800 damage factor and then when you take a look at his expertise uh, when his rage reaches reaches 70 percent he deals 30 percent no more normal attack damage which is really nice otherwise you take 20 percent less normal attack damage so really that's that's a lot of tankiness for a majority of his rage cycle uh, and if you're running away and you're not gaining rage you're just straight up going to take 20 percent less normal attack damage while you hit them back with this instant proc direct damage factor so that's really really nice you also gain some tankiness in the support tree as well right if you take a look here loose formation reduces skill damage that you're taking also if you grab emergency protection there's a 50 percent chance when you take skill damage that the next skill damage you take is going to be reduced which is really really nice you got another rage engine on burning blood so ultimately henry's not as tanky as a commander like Artemisia right who has the defense tree who also has a ton of extra health but Henry doesn't have the downsides that Artemisia has and he has the support tree which continues to give you a rage engine for YSG and so really not only do they have some nice synergy but the fact that your YSG is a little bit safe and less likely to be targeted in the open field is what makes this pairing really insane now the third pair we're going to talk about involves Nebu okay who's already on the board but we're also going to talk about Cyrus and I think Cyrus is another commander that a lot of players don't necessarily have he's also a commander in this instance that I think is probably better off as the primary now comparing him to Nebu a lot of people know what Nebu does right his active skill is a vanilla really solid five target AoE which we love to see he gives you 30 percent bonus defense 15 percent March speed which is important he also gives you 15 percent all damage which we love and you can reduce the targets rage if he's expertise you deal a little bit more damage to the one target that you're hitting but the thing about Cyrus primary is that he has a single target damage factor however it causes the target to take 20 percent additional damage so what that means is that if he's primary you're not losing anything from a talent perspective now you do miss the conquering tree a little bit right buckler shield is good but if you do put Cyrus primary Nebu's AoE is going to deal additional damage to that target because of the debuff that this applies you also gain 30 percent attack which is really important for Nebu and additional March speed which again is really really important in the open field taking a look at his third skill it's another debuff for the target that causes them to deal 40 percent reduced skill damage which is huge and I feel like it's odd that we don't see more Cyrus in the open field and this is definitely a good way to get him out there the interesting thing about the fourth skill here is that it's actually a circular AoE it's a small damage factor but it's actually an instant proc there's a 10 percent chance 
for the circular AOE to occur. You can hit up to three targets with, with a small damage factor, but it's free AOE damage in a circle, which we love to see. Now, if you look at the expertise here, it's a built in rage engine for Nebu, which he loves to see. Okay. You gain 50 rage per second for three seconds. That's 150 rage plus 40% more stats. So realistically this pair, I mean, it's funny because this pair actually came into the game at the same time, but it's a really good pair. It's sort of a match made in heaven here. And again, because of other exceptional commanders like Boudicca, like YSG and like Artemisia, I feel like we don't see a lot of Cyrus. But I do think that this pair is very, very solid, even still in 2022, moving into 2023. Now, just like in my cavalry video, this is actually where I would recommend archer players stop investing in archers. I know that sounds ridiculous. And if you're a, a mega well, a Kraken who can build six, seven archer marches, then by all means go ahead. But I think you really start to see diminishing returns here if you force yourself to build a fourth and fifth march. Because if you look at the talent that's left here, it's not great. Okay. It's not great. Of course, a lot of people are going to see the uh, Amanatori and say, oh my God, Omniarch, you really should be doing it with Artemisia. Yes, that's true, but it's super, super slow. The skill cycles aren't, they're not great. And I think a lot of people, I mean, they still use this as a relatively tanky and nice AOE margin in the open field. But I think this, this pair has, uh, I've seen people stray away from it a little bit ever since we saw Boudicca and uh, Henry come into the game. So again, good pair, but uh, realistically, it's not one that I, I would say you must be using. I think these three pairs uh, offer just a little bit more as a complete package. But if you wanted to build a fourth pair for archers, I would probably do something like Gilgamesh with Tomy. Uh, I think realistically, if you look here, like the Moses, he's not great. Okay. Sid is garbage. Edward is like in season of conquest. He's just, he's just not great. His rage cycle is so slow. Um, you absolutely could do something like uh Ramsey's art uh, Tomy instead of Gilgamesh, or you could even do something like Artemisia Tomy if you wanted to. Uh, because again, the point of this last march, and I'm I'm gonna say that the best option is Gilga Tomy, but the point of this march is literally just to apply debuffs to a target. If we take a look at Gilgamesh, he has a single target damage factor that is definitely outclassed now by commanders like Boudicca and Henry. I mean, even Artemisia, who's much older than him, has a higher damage factor, right? So the fact that it's a single target is unfortunate, but it's a 30% enemy health reduction, which is nice. You gain 30% archer health, which is going to help keep your Tamiris alive. And if you guys don't know, Tamiris, is, the point of her is to apply your poison stack debuff. If you stack this up a bunch, it's going to cause the target to take additional skill damage, which is going to be great if you're swarming them down with the other marches that we talked about in this video, because these three marches have a ton of skill damage especially if you're talking about single target as well. So adding Tamiris into the lineup is definitely going to help just really elevate the rest of the marches that you're using. But on top of Gilgamesh's health debuff, she also can apply a defense debuff of up to 30%, which is really solid. If you have Gilgamesh expertise, you take 15% less damage from normal attacks and you have a 30% chance to inflict the blood craving debuff on a target that will also cause them to take 15% increased skill damage. And if they happen to heal during that time, it's going to deal a 700 damage factor. Now healing is it's questionable in the open field. A lot of commanders will have a little bit of healing on them that you don't really realize. Like Boudicca has a healing factor that just triggers randomly. So basically that's, it's, it's not something you can really plan around with Gilgamesh, at least in the open field but it's a nice little bonus damage as well. And again, the point of this March is literally just to start applying debuffs to the target. And if you want to bring a fourth Archer March, that is definitely an option for you. But I would say ultimately you start to see some diminishing returns here with, with this March. And at the end of the day, I would say after building these three marches, you probably want to start diversifying into other troop types because you're building and training those troops already. You might as well start to use them. And if you don't use them for yourself, like sure you could use them for rallies and garrisons, but you're missing out on some really, really top tier commanders here. So let's talk about what I actually think the fourth pair you should invest in is uh, if you are an archer main player, and we're going to start with infantry. Okay. So I'm going to say, obviously your boy. Guan Yu with, can you guess it guys? Can you guess who we pair Guan Yu with? It's CPO. Okay. The reason that I said that is to stall a little bit while I find him on the list, but yes, Guan CPO. I feel like I don't really need to explain this commander pairing. In my opinion, this is the single best infantry March that you can be using in the open field. Both commanders have insane synergy. They both have insane AOE damage factor. They're silencing targets. They're reducing their health by 30%. This is a 30% AOE health debuff, which is a better health debuff than Gilgamesh. And that's why diversifying into infantry is definitely worth it for you. 
their stats complement each other you get some March speed on both of them if this is expertise when you leave a structure you're giving shields to your other archer marches which is super important with CPO I feel like I've talked about this pair a bunch on the channel so it's pretty self-explanatory in my opinion that this is right now the best open field uh, infantry March in the game and if you were going to bring one infantry march this would be it and it would elevate the entire lineup substantially moving on to pair number five i'm going to bring in nevsky with of course joan of arc prime okay this is if you're going to build a single cavalry march this is probably the way to go now again if you missed the cavalry video go ahead and check it out i talk more about this pair together but when you're surrounding down a target with nevsky you're going to cause them to take a really substantial defense reduction he has the same amazing single target damage factor as Boudica, as henry he has attack defense health skill damage increase and if you take a look at Joan of Arc she is just an insane AoE monster she's restoring the rage of part of your basically all your archers nearby which is super important and her AoE is going to fire off twice which means you get even more AoE in the open field and honestly it's just this is such a good pair it's super fast in the open field a ton of march speed of course if you don't have Joan of Arc you could do a Nevsky with William this is the pair that I'm currently using and you do get a lot of the same supportive buffs William is going to slow down the targets that you're hitting with his AoE you're also going to keep that rage buff for your nearby Archer marches and again if you're surrounding a target with all of your archers and you have the Nevsky William combo it's going to be really punishing for that target so realistically I think right now a lot of players are using Nevsky Joan because it's it's just it's so insane so this is the final lineup okay you have three different Archer pairings which are all exceptionally powerful in their own right you have the most powerful infantry the most powerful cavalry and you have an extra if you want to build this it's an extra supportive March and I think that's you're good to go now as far as equipment goes I made an entire equipment video not too long ago so check that out on the channel if you want a deeper dive into equipment but if you're just starting out this is sort of the starter build for archers you have three blue pieces one purple boots and then two green pieces here all of course are going to be archer talented and that will remain the case for the rest of the uh discussion here on equipment moving forward you can safely replace everything with the purple set for archers because archers actually have a four piece set bonus in the revival set which is unique to archers which we love to see you gain basically six percent bonus stats here and also you get the golden age which gives you 13 percent extra defense with the talent it's going to be up to 17. and you can see here that the defense is through the roof for your archers which is super important moving forward when you start to build your legendary set then you want to replace the chest and the gloves here this is going to give you a little bit more uh, archer health which is going to be super important i was lucky enough to get these crafted with the talent on my very first try which was absolutely insane but the dragon's breath plate this is like the first thing you want to replace the chest piece for archers this is so much archer health that's super important and then eventually for open field fighting you're going to end up with something like this where it's literally just all legendary everything and it looks absolutely gorgeous anyway guys with that being said if you enjoyed this video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton and it helps me beat that YouTube algorithm subscribe to the channel and consider clicking the bell notification to be notified the next time that I upload my infantry guide guide for rise of kingdoms comment down below your thoughts on the different marches we talked about here in the video I would love to hear from you guys down below and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace